Hello everyone and welcome back. I um, haven't made a video of this particular project because it was a concept in my head and I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but the more I work on it, clearly the more it shows that it's going to work. Um, the idea was uh, to try to mimic an acrylic pour that I have done in the past and I'm really pleased with how it's turning out. However, since it's a bigger piece, it's a 12 by 12. Um, since it's a bigger piece, I am going to show you something about moving your projects and also putting some glue on the back to secure it. Um, but before I do that, um, I had a question on Facebook and I thought it was an interesting little question because I kind of didn't even realize that I'm doing it, I guess. Um, she asked me about um, push pens. And I just got this idea not long ago and started doing it because I wanted my pieces to be completely flat and flush so that when I put them onto my board that um, there wouldn't be any spots that were maybe humped up or that I had to put too much glue on or whatever. So what I do is if I'm going to add a piece, um, so let's say I'm going to add it out here, and this piece doesn't sit completely on my board. So if I go to glue something to it, it might be raised up on the edges and not line up flush with this same piece that is the same strip width. So it might end up offset a little bit so that the piece won't look smooth when you look at it from the side, or if you were to feel it, it would there'd be a bump there. So what I've been doing recently is I've been using my push pen to put this all the way down onto the board and hold it down so that when I do attach an element to it, that they will be flush. Um, this one, um, you know, is, is just an example, but I guess I had made a, a picture and showed this and she asked me about it and I was answered the question thinking she meant pens, but then I thought about it later and I'm like, oh, I may have had a, a tack in there. So that's what I do with those. Um, but what I'm gonna show you here is just a real basic on how to remove your piece from a quilling board. This piece is a little bigger, so I am removing it much more than I typically would. I typically only remove it at the end, but since this is a bigger piece and it's got a lot of paper and I'm sort of um, frugal <laughs> to say the least is a nice way to say it. Um, I like to pick it up off of my board and put it onto what I am intending to um, mount it to eventually, which is an artist board or an artist panel, which is wooden. And people ask me about these all the time. Um, or people are always asking about what they can mount things to. Um, these come in natural wood. And what I really like about these is that you can do so much with these. You can even, you know, mount a piece of cardstock to it and then put your um, piece on it. You can also invert it and put your piece down inside. And then you've got a ready-made frame where you can mount some glass or plexiglass or whatever your preferred method is. Um, they also wear really well. And um, they will, if you put them on the reverse side too, you can stack them up if you take them to craft stores or, or, or craft fairs or um, they're just super durable because I've noticed that with canvas over time, they'll start to bow with the weight of the paper. Um, I have several pieces in canvas, but I prefer these artist boards. Anyway, so that's my little diatribe on that. Um, and I've mentioned this in some of my other videos. My son and my daughter-in-law are both working artists. And um, my daughter-in-law actually suggested these and I absolutely love them. So what I like to do is, um, again, I cover my board with Glad Press and Seal, which is basically, um, a cling wrap, but it's sticky on one side. The reason that I like this one better is that it doesn't move around whenever you're working. Um, as I showed there, it will have, um, you can peel it up 
and then you can also put it right back down and it's gonna stay. I've drawn on it and it doesn't go onto my board. The other thing that you can do is once you have, if you've spilled some glue, like right there, or if you just want to clean it off and use it again, you just use your damp cloth and wipe it away. Um, the other thing that I do is I put this on my quilling board and I use these over and over and over. They can be pierced with a pen and you they're still fine. Um, I just changed on my quilling board probably a week ago that the press and seal had been on there for months. And so it lasts forever and you don't have to worry about, you know, wax paper being clean on every single project. Um, wax paper too, I've also noticed that the glue can stick to it. So then you have to peel it off of the back and sometimes it'll leave little pieces of paper. So this press and seal, it doesn't prevent glue from sticking, but I'm going to show you how to take it off. Your glue is going to stick to anything that you put down. Cling wrap, I've also tried, but it moves around a lot. And so it, for me, it just doesn't work as well. So what I do is I take a piece of nice cardstock and I just use it like a spatula. And I go underneath my piece and I just remove it like this. Now, I always have the philosophy that I should glue my pieces together, not down, because then when I glue the final piece down, each individual element is held in place in several different ways and on different sides. So it's held together all the way around, but it's also held together on the piece uh, where you've mounted it. So if you've done that correctly, you should be able to pick your piece up, move it around, so this is what it would look like. It's very flexible <laughs> and um, you should be able to handle it easily without ruining any of your elements. But one of the other things that I wanted to show is that I do this as well. Um, people have asked about quote unquote sealing your piece and this is part of the process. So when I'm doing a large piece like this, I like to peel it up every like maybe 25% that's done and I like to flip it to the back side, and I like to put a little bit of glue on certain elements. Um, so for example, let me find one that's relatively new. So, um, so on these like loose coils, you can see I've already glued this one down because I can't push my finger through from the other side. So this one could probably use a little more glue because I can push it through. There are a few on here that are like that. There's a good one right there that needs to be glued down. So what I've kind of found that I like to do <laughs> is I'm a scrounger. I like to use things I already have at home. So I had this old makeup brush, which is a Kabuki brush. I probably bought this in the 90s and it was in a drawer. It was expensive. I didn't want to throw it away because I knew there was another use. And so this is what I'm using it for. I cleaned it out really good with a degreaser so there's no makeup in it. And then I use this. I tap a little bit of glue and then I either tap it on my bowl where my glue is to distribute the glue evenly or you can tap it on your press and seal just however it takes just to evenly distribute the glue. And rather than brushing the glue on, which will get caught in the little nooks and crannies, you're actually gonna do it like makeup and you're gonna dab, okay? You're gonna dab it like this, okay? That's gonna keep it from showing through on the other side or getting clogged up in all the little holes in the little nooks and crannies. So that's the first part of taking uh, the piece off of uh, your working surface and then securing the back and your loose coils. Um, that's the first spot. So I'm going to switch to time lapse and then uh, do the gluing. And then when we come back, I will show you how to uh, put this on a board. Even though this particular piece is not finished, I'm gonna go through the steps. I won't secure it on my board yet because I still have to finish up these this part, but um, I'll at least have addressed it. When people ask me these questions on Facebook or on my YouTube channel, it's really hard to type all of this out. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna put it out there and it'll help with everyone's with their finishing needs. So I'll be back in just a moment and we'll do the other part.
See, I wanted to show you. Sometimes I screw up too. So when I put uh, my glue on here, see I got too much right there. Um, so I'm just taking a damp brush and I'm gonna clean that off there because that's an open coil and that's gonna show. So I am just, I think I wanted that one to be kind of offset. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of cleanup through with my damp brush. Um, what happens here is that um, if you don't spread your glue evenly on your brush, which I didn't because I was get, I was in a hurry, um, this is what's gonna happen. So it's a good thing that I made the mistake so I could show you, uh, but easily fixed. I always keep, again, if you've seen any of my videos, I always keep my water and my damp cloth on my workstation so that it, when I have an uh-oh, I can always fix it. But this is also great for anything that you're doing on the reverse side, that if you um, have too much glue or have some that it's peeking up between an element, especially on your dark pieces, you always can just clean it up with one little swipe. So I wanted to show that because those little uh-ohs matter sometimes. Okay, back to ceiling. Okay, so I've, I'm done popping it on the back. So I wanna clean up my board because I'm gonna put it back down on my board so I can continue working on it. But again, you, I've just got my damp cloth and the press and seal works so well. I can just wash it off. I made this with a permanent marker, so it will just um, pop off when I pull up my Glad press and seal. Now this is just an, a bulletin board that I bought at like Walmart or something. I don't know for sure where I got it, but I use it for my larger pieces. And since I use a lot of artist panels, I do already have this uh, 12 by 12 section already cut out, so, or lined up. So now that this is all clean, there's no wonky glue that's gonna make it stick worse than it was. Um, and wipe your fingers <laughs> so it doesn't get on your piece. Um, you can put it back on your board, repin it, and continue your work. I tore off something I didn't like, that's what that is. So, uh, which happens a lot, by the way, nobody's pieces are ever perfect. Um, I put, I used to have a, like a white square right here that was a vortex that, I was proud of the vortex, so I glued it down, but it just didn't flow with the piece, so I ripped it out too, so there's a little white right there, but it'll cover it up once I get uh, moving on with the project. So um, if you see little things like that on your project, don't worry. Just take a little piece of, um, a little scissors and nip it off. Or I will sometimes put my scissors on upside down and just nip them off that way. Or uh, when I put my next element there, it should cover that. So um, like I said, nobody's <laughs> projects are ever perfect. So remember this is art. Just relax and enjoy it. But that was how I wanted to show how you get the piece off. Now, the other thing that I'm going to show you is a couple of uh, different things about uh, when you are done and you're ready to put it on your final uh, piece, either, um, if you can hear my dogs barking, I apologize. <laughs> I've got little nervous Nellies. So anyway, um, this uh, particular one, I am going to put on an artist board. And I wanna say one other thing about the artist board. The one I showed you earlier, I obviously have painted. I painted it with spray paint. Um, I find that if you are to use um, a spray paint that is a matte finish, it'll be easier for the glue to stick whenever you're ready to mount your piece. That's number one. Um, and then number two, um, and I've done this with other things. I did a Thanksgiving piece that I mounted on. Sometimes I get lucky and I can find artist boards that have really nice grain. Uh, the wood grain is real. And so it just really looks beautiful uh, once you mount your piece and then you can seal it and it starts to get shiny. And these um, beautiful... Uh, grains will pop out on your piece and they're just gorgeous. I'm going to do a piece for my son 
of a fish, uh, hopefully for Christmas if I have time. And um, I'm going to do that with, with that piece because he took a special trip to fish for a fish that's only in two places, whatever. But anyway, so I'm going to try to duplicate that particular fish and um, I'm going to put it on a raw board. But I wanted to show that because, um, like I said, sometimes you get lucky. And they're, they're finished enough on the inside, on the opposite side, that for his, I may do it this way. He has a, um, a storefront and it will probably be a lot safer if I do it on the inside and then I'll mount some glass to it. I do stained glass work as well. So I'm thinking about putting some Baroque glass on it to kind of mimic what water would look like. Anyway, um, the other thing that I wanted to show too is that, you know, a lot of people work on their piece on what they want to finish it on. And the problem with that is, is that once you put it on this board, you can no longer secure it with pins or tacks or whatever it is you want to use. So what I do is I like to do the majority of my piece on the board and then maybe these little outside pieces or something like, you know, just to fill in, I will do once it's on the board, but I never put my project on the board until it's at least 90% done. So I wanna make sure that I say that because the what I've seen a lot of beginners do, which is a problem, is they might buy this beautiful paper that you've uh, paid, you know, a couple bucks for. And um, if you try to create your piece on this piece of paper, the odds of you ruining it are very high. So this piece, actually, I think what I'm going to do is use it, cut it out, and then spray paint over it when I'm ready to use it. I'm not sure, but that's my plan and to use it like a template. Anyway, doesn't matter. For this piece, it definitely won't be there. But, um, so what I do is once I've taken it off my board and I'm ready to put it on my final piece, which would be, in this case, an artist panel, I'm gonna center it, and um, I've got a little issue over here I know I need to finish, so, or fix, so, um, it, it gives you a gauge of kind of where you are and what needs to be done. Um, for this particular piece, I had found the center on my board and then it'll translate to the center here. Um, my pl original plan was to also quill the side so it looked like it was flowing over. Don't know if I'll get there or not. But um, what this allows you to do is kind of see what your final product's gonna look like and Someone in one of my groups mentioned this because I was, in the beginning when I was only about here, I became a little overwhelmed and didn't want to finish this project. But she suggested doing that, and once I did and it popped off, it was created a whole new enthusiasm. So if you get stuck in a project and you've only got, you know, a little bit of it done and the rest of it's in your head, um, feel free to take it off your board and, you know, hold it up to your wall, hold it up to the light, you know, put it up against um, colored pieces of paper, something, because sometimes that will reinvigorate your imagination or get you enthused about it again, which is exactly what happened for me. So I can't remember who it was, and I'm sorry I can't name you by name, but whoever it was, thank you. Um, it made all the difference in the world in my enthusiasm for this project because I nearly stopped when I was right there. Anyway, okay, so once you've taken it off, um, I personally have found that the best way to do this, depending upon the size of the element that you're going to mount, um, sometimes it's best to have your glue on your panel and sometimes it's best to have your glue on your piece. If I'm just going to have like a small little element that I'm just gonna put on a board, I would put the glue on the piece itself. In this case, since my finished piece is going to take up the entire board, I will put the glue directly on the board. Now, I suggest always using um, a spray adhesive. Um, you can use regular glue and you can brush it on. I've done that too. 
Um, and it works fine. You just have to work really quickly before the glue sets. At least where I'm from, where our air is super dry, I'm, I live in the desert, and so it um, is, uh, it dries almost too quickly. So, you know, I have to work super duper fast if I do it that way. So if it's more humid where you are, you know, great, more power to you, but um, that's what I do. So I'm gonna show you my spray adhesive though, with keeping in mind that what I use um, came from an industrial environment. Um, I've mentioned before what I do for a living and we have a manufacturing plant and um, I went out in the shop and one of the guys gave this to me. You won't be able to find this on the shelves. So when I tell you that I use this, keep in mind that it's overkill. This is actually made for wood veneer and I'm using it on paper, so I don't recommend it for that, but it is a nice spray. It's got a nice nozzle um, and I've covered it up on purpose because it will tell you right here that it is heavy duty. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, again, I don't recommend it for your paper, but it does give you an idea of what I do. So I spray, I'll usually be up about 12 inches or so from my board. I'll spray the board and then I hold my piece over the top and wherever I want it to be, I'll sort of center it with my eyeball and then I drop it. And the reason you want to drop it is, is you, if you are to roll it on, some of that adhesive is going to get spread uh, and gather up in one place or another. So it's just best just to drop it. Um, and then you can wiggle it around if you need to, but if you drop it as close to where you want it as possible, then you're not gonna have any uh, running. But the other thing I'm gonna tell you is, is that if you drop it and you need to wiggle it and there's a piece of glue, you always wanna go back to your damp brush and your water and you can whisk it away. So it'll come right up if you use a uh, less strong <laughs> adhesive. Um, I, there are lots of them out there. I, I've, I hear that Mod Podge has one. I haven't tried it. Can't recommend it because I don't know. But um, I wouldn't use it to stick it down, I guess is kind of where I'm coming from, is I would, I would purchase an actual spray adhesive. Um, again, if you are to brush something on, make sure that it's nice and thin so that it doesn't seep up through. See, in this case, when I've got open coils, I don't want the glue to come up through the top. So you need to make absolutely sure it's really thin. Um, and again, in my gluing video, I go over how to make that thin. Um, but don't water it down because if you water it down, then it's too thin and it'll take too long to dry and it won't adhere as tightly. The other thing that I do when once it is glued in place is that I use a, a clear spray paint. And what this does is it will also stiffen all of these little open coils so that they are absolutely secure. See, that one's still a little loose. And it will stiffen them enough that, it, you know, if anybody comes by and fingers on it the way I personally do all the time, it will keep it in place. Um, these I've already sealed a few times so you can see they're pretty hard. But um, I'm gonna have to re revisit that one. Um, so what I use is a Krylon spray. It's my favorite because once everything's glued down and dry and secure, then you can put your glaze on. That's uh, using a semi-gloss or a gloss on your background color will not glue and adhere as well as um, one that already has gloss in it. And it's just a simple principle of assembling anything. Uh, glue is gonna stick best to a rougher surface. Um, and it's why when you know they paint your car that they sand it first. It's, it's the same principle. So um, this one is my favorite. Um, I have used all the clear ones out there. I just like this one because I get more consistent results. You can do a gloss or semi-gloss if you like, however you want to do it. Um, I bought this little thingy separate 
at one of the big box stores. And <laughs> I think I spent like, I don't know, five or six bucks on it, maybe more, I don't remember. But this thing is so great because if you have a big piece and you wanna spray it multiple times, um, you only have to, to pull the trigger here instead of up here. So your hands stay clean, number one, and number two, it doesn't, um, it's a little more even. Um, you know, if you let up a little with your finger, you're gonna have different results than if it's nice and even. So um, the other thing that I wanna say here is that when you are spraying, it's you need to stay up off of your piece. If you get too close, you're gonna have little globs and it's not gonna be nice and even. So what I do is I take my gun and I start out at the side and I pull the trigger and then I go over it. And then when I'm out at the side, I let off and then I do it again. And the reason that you do this is, is so that everything in the center will be evenly sprayed. If you stop here, you're, it's gonna be thicker here than it is here. So in order for it to be nice and even, you should always over spray before you move on. So you go and go in a pattern. And then once you've gone in this pattern, you wanna go the opposite direction. And um, where I work now, we're a manufacturing company and I've been there for quite a while, but before that I was in the car business for 25 years. So um, this is the same type of method that they use when they're painting a car. You're gonna ov always over spray so that the finished piece is nice and even. Um, so I hope that helps, um, and if you have any questions, comments, whatever, uh, please um, put your comments below, and then if you like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye. There's one other thing I want to mention really quickly um, about uh, your finished pieces. Um, a lot of people ask about uh, painting underneath, um, which is what this is. This is a uh, watercolor that I did. Um, it also has um, some of this uh, sparkle paint. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's got um, some iridescent color in here. Uh, but one thing I want to mention about this is that if you are doing a watercolor, um, acrylic's not so bad, but watercolor specifically, um, if you don't seal it before you glue down your elements, then you're going to have um, an issue. And so I wanna show this one. It was one of the first ones that I did. Uh, I had re received some uh, watercolors for Christmas and I was just kind of playing. They were watercolor pens. And so I was playing a little bit and I noticed that because I didn't seal it, when I went to glue this one down, do you see this white right here? That's what happened is the glue was here and um, it must have settled when it was drying or it may have settled when I was putting it on. It's also marred it under here that if you don't seal it before you glue down your elements, then this is what you're gonna find. So uh, this one, I had already learned that lesson. So I did this painting specifically for this piece. So it wasn't something that I did and then applied quilling to, but I wanted to make sure that I let you know that you can seal your uh, watercolors with a gloss and it will stick. I was just saying earlier that it doesn't stick as well, but um, a lot of people do want to do quilling over paintings and um, this particular one, like I said, I, I painted it, sealed it, and then applied my elements. Um, this one is showing exactly what can happen. if. You